Yeah, we come from a well, lot of fishing family. Yeah. My wife's relation to a fisherman. Uh, my father done a little bit of fishing like I did in the early days, but then we became fishmongers yeah. on the other side of the scale. Sorry, One thing. I'm just going to get you a microphone so everybody can hear what you're saying. Can you hear me or not? I feel like a pop star. I'm <laughs> <laughs> not, not shell. Anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah, so my, my father was one of the old fishmongers uh, that used to go around the town with a wooden barrel way back in the 50s, 50s. Um, in those days he would have had only four or five varieties because although there's 40 odd varieties or more, corky hostings, they're, they're called different times of the year, you don't get everything in one go. So in those days, you, you reckon I need this? Dear, I might, I might start singing in a minute. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. So I've lost it where I was. Uh, in those days, yeah, there was only a few varieties, and uh, he would have had four or five on the barra. And some of them had pitches, some of them had rounds. A pitch was designated by the council. They were allowed to stand probably three or four hours a day, and people would come to the barra. My father had a round, that meant he pushed around the streets. Anyway, um, there are still fishmongers, they now work out, of, work out of vans. My wife and I had a shop in Hastings, one of the oldest fish shops in Hastings, fishmongers and curers. We used to do all smoking. And uh, in the end, up, we ended up uh, with a very big mobile selling fish all over the place, even... Uh, all around South London serving restaurants. Is this work? It's working, isn't it? Yeah. I'm going to lay the fish out and I'll speak to you about what they are. It's quite difficult working without ice because uh, it's quite warm in here, so all I'm going to put out in a minute. Quickly tell you about them and then uh, I'm going to fillet them for you. Right. That'll do, I think, for a minute. Uh, right, so for the people that. This is the only fish here that didn't come from Hastings because we've got a cod ban on at the moment. So I had to get this one from Finnersgate. <laughs> but I wanted to show you what a cod looked like for some of you that don't know. Um, we catch a lot of these in the winter time. Um, mostly caught with the tram on it. Uh, some of them are caught with the trawl. But they grow a lot bigger. They can end up this big. Right. Placing dabs. They're caught pretty well all the year round. They're, they're, they're now becoming at their best. When I say that, I mean that the, not, the, they're nice and thick now. In the winter time, they can be very thin and they've got no taste. So this is the best time of the year to eat those, place and dabs. There's lemon soles here today. There's been quite a few lemon soles caught. Lovely fish, beautiful fish to eat. Whitey, this is really a winter fish. They're, there's a few around this time of the year, but m many more in the winter. These are just coming in. I'm sure most people know what these are. These are mackerel. They're just coming in. Any time now, the sea will be full of them. And there's another fish that we catch normally in the winter. There's one or two around this time of the year, but the bulk of them are caught in the winter. They are herrings. There's a big herring. Big herring fishery uh, Hastings in <coughs> the 60s, about 15 boats drifting. Uh, and in those days there was an auction. The herrings were caught in the evening, taken to the market, and they were auctioned in the morning. And probably as many as some, some days, as many as 2,000 stone. Um, I don't know what that is in kilos. The stone is 14 pounds, about 6 kilos. So. Quite a, lot of key, quite a lot of fish, and that went on for about four or five weeks, short season. Then after that came sprats. Uh, sprats, are, again, people think sprats are small areas, they're not at all, they're a different fish altogether. So as you go through the year, all these fish come, these different fish. 
and they're all lovely to eat. And you really, really, people have got to eat fish because people seem to be frightened of cooking it. It's so simple to cook. Anyway, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to fill up some of these for you, show you how to help me do them. All right, now, I'm going to do them my normal speed and then I'm going to slow up to show you what's going on. Anyway, I'm going to do this now slowly to show you what I've just done. The first cut is round the head. I'm not cutting through the bone, I'm just cutting through the fish. The, the second cut is to push the knife right down the bone, right to the tail. The knife will come out at the tail end. There. Can you see that? Right. With a very, very slight saw in action, you, you bring the tip of the knife up to the, to the end of the fish. Turn the fillet, knife goes back in across the bone, there's a bone here, I'll show you in a minute what the bone looks like. You cut off at the tail, into the bone, over the bone, release that bit there, and now we're over and drop. Now we do a little action like that, we take the fish off the bone. Right. Now, the other side, the same thing, cut into the cut into the, into the bone, not through it, push the knife right the way down. This time, if we bring this knife that way, right the way around like that. Lift it up, release the tail, right into the bone, over the bone. And then it's going to the bone. That's the fish, right? Here's the trigger. There's the bone. When, when that knife goes down through, what we've got to do, once we release that side, we've got to cut into the bone and over it, because that bone is like that. Now most of these today that you see are done by machine. Not many of them. So, but we are getting uh, we, we, we are getting a few youngsters uh, interested in this. So we, we have three the other day. Now right? so these are lemon salt. All flatfish are very much the same to do. Right? Same sort of action. thing as we done just a minute. Right down to the tip. The knife comes out at the end now. Bring it right up to the top. Release the fillet from the tail, which is what I've done there. Cut into the bone and then over the bone. Release the fish again by the head and with that sort of sweeping action Believe it or not, it's quite difficult for me to do them slow. <laughs> yeah, it is because I, you know, I do so many. To do them slow, it's <laughs> it's more difficult. Right, this time we take the knife that way. Right. Again, into the fish. Release the tail over the bone. Right. Right now, that's flat fish. Most flatfish are the same. Fish are all different, but most flatfish are done the same. Now we're going to do this one, this cod. Right. Flatfish and round fish. This is a round fish. Now, a 
I've only got one of these, so I'm going to do, do it slowly to start with. So first cut is in there, right up into the edge. There, right. You then start the cut just here by the fin. Once the knife is in, push the knife right through, like that, and come down to the end of the tail, right? Now, the next cut, I've got to cut right up into the edge of the cob, like that, right? Now the next one, this bone, the bone in this, the belly bone is like that, so we've got to come over the bone with that action like that, and then underneath, like that, and now that's off. There's the cob fillet, what you buy in the shop. Now that does contain, still contain one or two bones which are in here. If you're like me and don't like any bones, my, my, my wife will pick them out. I can't, I have to cut them out. So that's, that's what I do. There's the bones in there. Now there's no bones in that at all. And that's what you buy in the shop. Right, we'll do the other side. This time, same thing, cut round the, underneath the fin, right into the edge, release it there. This time we start at the tail. Just cut into the tail, follow the backbone right the way up. I'm trying to do it so you can all see. Right up to the head, right? Again, you've got to get over this bit. Knife out, right off at the tail, right there, and that's it, and there it is again. That's the cod for them. Right, the mackerel. These ones I do differently. This one, done like that. We'll have one or two little bones right up there. You can either cut them out like that, like that, or like my wife will do. She'll eat them. She'll uh, pick them out when she's eaten. Right. So that's Matt. Now they have my old friend here, the herring. Tush. Tush. My old friend. Tush. What are you talking about? Filleting. Mm -hmm. Could you just um, tell us about how you know catching methods? Uh, yeah, catching, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The pool's not here because yeah. he was going to tell you that. Yeah. Right, all the herons and aces are caught by drift net. You can catch herons in a trawl. We all have our herons are caught with a drift net. Now, like before, when you saw the the animation, I've been drifting, and when you catch herons. The little tiny ones go through the net. The net is hanging down in the, in the sea like a curtain. It's probably several hundred yards long. It doesn't touch the bottom of the sea. It floats it, it, from the top down is about 30 foot. Long. About 30 foot. Now, it, you drift with the tide. The fish come along and swim into the net. The net, it, the size of the net is determined by the government. When the fish swims in, the net goes in beyond the gill and that's how it's caught. Now the net's only in the sea maybe an hour, hour and a half before you pull it back in. The small ones will go through and sometimes when it's rough, and I've been there many times when it's rough, and you're pulling them in, the great big ones that haven't quite gill drop out and it's so frustrating, you're trying to pull the net in without losing. So you get just the one type of area really. The small ones go through the net and the big ones drop out. Really, really lovely way of fishing, drift netting, because the nets are only in the water a few hours anyway, and the fish is still alive when you, you know, when you pull it in. So it really is a, a lovely way of fishing. Anyway, 
I don't know how many thousands and thousands of these I've done, maybe millions, I don't know. But as I said earlier on, we had a fish shop in the High Street where we used to, where we used to cure them. And we used to do kippers. And to kipper them, like that, just open them up, take that out, that's the gut, and that's what the kipper would have been, obviously washed. And then it has to go in salt, and then it's smoked. So that's, I don't know how many of them, I don't know, I really don't. Millions, I used to think. I used to, in the Aaron season, it's only a short season in, in Hastings. Again, fill it to whiten, you can do them like that. I have to, we, we do a thing called a fish broth, I'm going to get that in, isn't it? A long, long canoe. The way I filleted that looks a little bit wasteful, but there are no bones in that at all. If you fill it in the traditional way, which I, which I will, to show you the difference, you do get the odd bone. different type. This is a channel white and this is a pelt white. In. Don't see many of these in the market but they're very nice to eat. Normally caught in the wrecks or in closes near the rocks. Much the same as the other ones to taste. Pelting, yeah, yeah. But I'm going to do this a different way. I'm going to block this. This is called block filleting. But, but leaving it together, yeah, leaving it together. You've got the fin bone down the back, much the same way. Now yeah, the other way, dealing with this, we don't catch many haddocks here. There were haddocks many years ago. But this is a different way of doing them. You don't see many fin and haddocks now. Does anybody know what fin and haddocks are? Smoked haddocks? No, you don't see so many of them now. When we had our shop, we used to do a lot of them. You can do them in, with whites in or haddock. How are we doing for time, ladies?
Now, most of these things will be done, you can ask your fishmonger to do. Now that, you can then fill that with stuff and cook it. So, right. So that's pocketing. Uh, right, we'll fill it this area. Fill it this one for you. You can't get all the bones out of the herring. My father told me once there's 365 bones in the herring, the same as days in a year. I've never counted them, but uh, I don't know whether he's right or not. Uh, right. You only get the main bone out. Tiny hairy bones, but normally if you eat bread with them, you patch, you don't take any notice of bone meal. As soon as I bite into it, I get one. Yeah, so that's a yeah, herring fillet. Right? Not the way I like to cook herrings. I've only got one. Do you want to finish up now? Do you want to finish up? Sorry? Yeah. Yeah. Finish? Yeah. yeah. Fine. Good. Okay, I'm just going to do this one errand to show you. <laughs> I just want people to know how to cook an errand. Look, this is the way to do it. Take the head off and score it. Don't scratch it. Score it right in like that. Look. One, two, three, four, five. Grill it and fry it. Beautiful. All you've got to do when it's cooked is just lift each segment out and all the bones will be in there. Right, I've got to go. <laughs>